So we're here at uh, CES 2012 at the free skill uh, area here at uh, Palazzo. So what are you showing? Well, welcome to CES 2012. It's been an exciting 12 months. I think when we were here last year, uh, we were just uh, announcing the iDOT MX6 series, uh, which to uh, remind your uh, viewers uh, consists of the actually three pe uh, members of that family, the iDOT MX6 Quad, which of course is a quad, uh, quad uh, application processor. Uh, the IDOT MX6 Dual, which has two cores, and the IDOT MX, IDOT MX6 Solo, which is a single core, uh, where the quad and the dual have uh, very high-end graphics, um, so it actually has our triple play uh, 3D graphics system, uh, which actually has three uh, graphics accelerators, as well as uh, a dual stream H.264 1080p capable uh, video unit. The Solo uh, was designed more for uh, entry level. Uh, e-readers, tablets, uh, uh, consumer devices, embedded devices, as well as automotive devices. Uh, they don't quite need that much multimedia power, but need a, a lower end ASP. So uh, since then, uh, many things have happened. Number one, we've uh, uh, sampled um, the uh, iDynamic 6 series, um, uh, actually starting back in June. And uh, we've been working with our internal uh, uh, engineering uh, development, as well as uh, multiple customers, uh, to get that silicon into a number of different platforms uh, that we're hoping to see out in the market in 2012. So that's where our history has been. Um, what we're announcing here at CES this year is uh, the addition of two new members of the iDOT MX6 series family. So that consists of the iDOT MX6 Dual Lite, uh, which sits in between the Dual and the Solo, as well as the iDOT MX6 Solo Lite. And so if you look at what the uh, market is evolving to, uh, in many cases, a, uh, a dual-core processor is very much so a, uh, a, mandatory, uh, a mandatory processor in terms of the number of cores to have for certain markets. The use of a solo processor, of course, is, or a solo core, uh, is used in a number of different areas as well and just as important. But we felt it was important to have two different offerings um, for a dual-core processor, hence the dual light as well as the dual. And so what we did was the dual light borrows many of the uh, performance characteristics of the dual, so of course two cores, uh, as well as a 64-bit memory interface and the uh, dual stream video unit, but it uses a slightly less powerful uh, 3D graphics unit and adds in an EPD controller. So for instance, if you want to create the next generation e-reader, uh, your option would now be to have a dual core processor with an integrated third generation e, uh, e EPD uh, display controller. And on the lowest end, uh, there, uh, we have the Solo Lite, which also can be used for a number of different, uh, number of different categories like uh, uh, industrial control units uh, for very, very low end entry level uh, devices spanning the consumer, uh, automotive, and, uh, and uh, embedded consumer segments. So does the Lite basically mean you remove GPU and you put EPD controller, or is it different, not just that? The way we look at it is, is that we match the feature set uh, for that processor to the type of applications and the price point that a consumer is looking for. And really when you look at the entire series, um, one of the main themes behind it uh, for all five processors is very, very strong compatibility. So for instance, the uh, Solo, the Dual Lite, the Dual and the Quad are 100% pin compatible. It literally means that you design one board for a Quad and you can take the Quad out, put in a Dual, put in a Dual Lite or a Solo with zero changes to the hardware and because we use the same uh, basic uh, intellectual property IP units within each processor, the software is very, very highly compatible. And we felt that was really important for this family because when you look at, when you look at a number of uh, 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 segments as they start proliferating out into the market, just having one device uh, is no longer enough. Um, we're seeing this across the board where uh, segments want to be able to come out with a wide range of devices that hit different price points and different capabilities. And instead of forcing a customer to use one processor or last generation's processor with this generation's processor to differentiate the platforms, we're giving them the ability to have up to five choices uh, to be able to differentiate their platforms with. Plus, we have the ability to really reduce the amount of engineering effort on the hardware and the software side uh, to make the device a reality. So is there a price difference between a dual and dual light? To a dual light, certainly. There's, uh, uh, you know, the way we have actually put the feature sets together is to hit certain price points that makes uh, the most sense for the market. Uh, so you know, the quad with, the, with its premium features will be on the high end, uh, whereas the dual will be a little less for people who don't need the quad core performance. 
and then the step below that will be the dual light, which where you don't you need the dual core, but you don't necessarily need the highest end graphics performance. So how about the difference in price on a let's say on a smartphone that might want to have single or quad, or let's say a tablet single or quad? What is it? Just the difference in price for the CPU or the processor? There's also other stuff that comes in automatically somehow. Well, the way to look at it is is that. Um, Whenever you have a device, uh, one of the things uh, with the 6 series, one of the benefits here is that by providing um, this level of scalable performance, um, it enables our customers to add much more value add, whether that's software, services, um, online capabilities, or however they want to differentiate with the same set of silicon. And so uh, it's not so much to look at it in terms of, well, I've got four processors or two processors. The way to look at it is, is that we're providing them the ability to scale their investment and their value add into much greater levels so that they can differentiate their products better. Because the bill of material for, let's say, a tablet, this, the processor is only a small part of it, kind of. Still, right? It, it certainly can. You so, know, if yeah. there's a difference of price of just ten dollars between single and quad, maybe most people won't want to take a quad and a tablet. Or is it also you would have to get a faster RAM so to adapt to it? All other stuff on the motherboard that changes. Well, in terms of the actual hardware changes, there's really not that many. You know, if you wanted to create a single uh, platform that used, say, uh, commodity DDR3, and you wanted to create it so it ran with the uh, quad, the dual, the dual light, and the solo you actually can set it up to where um, there really are very few changes on the board. Now many of our customers are using this to actually change uh, different things like whether they have Wi-Fi and cellular or just uh, Wi-Fi uh, plus additional like if you want to have uh, storage capabilities which are just minimal uh, or if you want to have the ability to add in a SATA hard drive, uh, solid state drive so that on the high end you have the, uh, you know, the most capable performance as well as the most storage and on the low end you have you know just the right amount of storage and minimal uh, uh, minimal hardware capabilities. All right, so you have a demo. Yeah, actually, the um, uh, some of these demo, this one demo will be a little familiar to your viewers uh, that we've shown previously. This is a little bit of a uh, 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 an addition to what we've shown uh, back in June and then at ARM TechCon. Um, so each of these uh, platforms are our evaluation platforms for the Atom MX6. Uh, each of these are running the. I don't MX6 quad processor. So you uh, have four systems right here. Actually, there's only three systems, and I'll explain a little bit on how we've configured it. The um, uh, this one board right here is driving uh, that you see back here is driving uh, this plot, this display, which is a 1024 by 768 LVDS display. Uh, we have a second LVDS display uh, running here, and we've attached a 1080p uh, television monitor to it. Now. The system itself is capable of driving a fourth display, which we're not showing here today. Um, but um, which would output from where? Actually, just through this connector right here, uh, using a uh, just using a standard RGB monitor. So you could have perhaps like a smaller WVGA display uh, attached to the system. The point is, is that we've built in future scalability with the six uh, series family. So as devices that need larger and larger screen real estates or tighter and tighter pixel densities. Um, we are uh, just scratching the surface on what the 6 Series can do today so that two years from now when, the, um, uh, uh, which, when more detailed monitors or display panels come out, we'll be able to run them with no problem. So what we're going to show is kind of three steps here. The first is um, I have this running on a single core and all it's doing is it's taking this uh, web page and scrolling it back and forth. So this is equivalent to a user putting their fingers on the touch screen and moving it up and down. Um, so the uh, browser is active and the system is doing something. So we're using a little bit of CPU MIPS. Um, now if you look at it, the average CPU utilization on a single core is 85 85%. Because uh, we actually have a lot of uh, different threads and activity happening in the background. We wanted to show what would happen when you go to a dual core. Now, it takes a little bit for the system to respond, but with a dual core, as you, as you imagine, you start seeing a, uh, a decrease in the average uh, performance down to around 43 to 46%. And when you go to quad core, we drop down to the 15 to 20 uh, to 25%, uh, kind of in that range. And so the point there is, is that 
um, by going from single to quad core, we're able to greatly reduce the amount of actual CPU utilization by spreading the load over multiple processors, which then would allow us to run at lower power, lower, uh, lower frequency to get the same job done. So how much lower power is it? Do you show it here in the MIDI vault? Actually, or do you show? not with this one in particular, uh, but you can see, uh, actually, let me address that in a second. Let me show the rest of the demo, and then we'll come right back to that. Um, so now that we have, let's just start with the single core. So right now I'm just running in single core mode. The system doesn't even recognize that there's three other cores to play with. I'm going to start um, this video. And as you see, well, it just disappeared, but this is a 1080p H.264 high profile video. And we're running it, uh, we're running it at 60 frames per second. So this isn't just a standard 30 frames per second clip. We're doing a lot of extra work uh, to get it up to the native refresh rate of this, of this screen. While we're doing that, uh, and this will take a second for it to, uh, to start up. Okay, so uh, we're still running on a single core, but you can see that we're doing our 1080p60 um, uh, video playing in the background. We have uh, very liquid smooth frame rates. Uh, 3D MMO6 is running uh, at the same time, and these are just using our graphics accelerators. So the key point here is that we have a background task happening, which is the web browser. So on a single core system, it tells you one, uh, a couple things. One, you can have all this multimedia content running while the user is doing something like uh, browsing, something else in the background. However, your CPU utilization is at 99%. So if you go to dual core, you'll be able to jump down, you'll jump down a little bit and you'll have a little bit more headroom, um, but not as much as what you would see when you go to a quad core. Now, the whole point behind this is uh, and the quad core has actually got a utilization around, it'll settle down here in a second, but it should settle down to around uh, 35%. And so the key message here is, is that we're still doing the same multimedia. We now have quad core going, and if you remember in single core we were at 99% utilization. Right now we're at about 30% utilization on the quad cores. So this isn't the best way to look at it, but if you think about these processors running at a gigahertz, 30% um, of 4 gigahertz is around 1200, uh, 1200 megahertz, 1.2 gig. That means I have 2.8 gig uh, performance on a quad core left over to do other tasks. Now that doesn't mean that you, it, isn't, it may not sound like, you know, well, you're just trying to put uh, a bunch of MIPS together that are not being used, but think about how people use devices. Uh, they could be browsing the web, but they also could have Facebook and their email applications and Twitter in the background running to download the latest uh, comments from their friends or from news feeds or having some other background tasks like video processing for a blog like this while we're doing something else. So that headroom does matter. All right, so all this performance is amazing and could you put it in a laptop? Could it, well, uh, you know, our customers are doing a, a variety of different uh, uh, form factors. This is just simply a tablet from uh, Compal, um, which um, is using our iDynamic 6 Quad. It's got uh, uh, dual uh, cameras in the back for 3D, and uh, it's quite thin and quite light. Um, the, uh, these types of form factors are more uh, understood by the industry in terms of how you use uh, silicon. Uh, uh -huh. And some of the new products, uh, you know, with the tablet revolution. Yeah. But certainly, form factors like ultrabooks and yeah. uh, laptops, uh, we have com uh, customers that are already building those. Uh, uh, for instance, a company called Genesee is uh, actually has a, uh, a notebook uh, uh, type device out. So there's absolutely no reason why you can't take the high performance, low power of a uh, of a Freescale iDynamic Six Series processor and put it into that type of form factor. And uh, the performance and ice cream sandwich on this is going to be super smooth. Absolutely. In fact, all of these are running on ice cream. Um, so the, uh, we've been working on uh, ice cream sandwich uh, for, only, uh, for only a couple months, and we already have uh, most of the pork completed. Um, and uh, we have a long history with working with uh, uh, Google Android as well as Linux and Microsoft yeah. Windows CE as well as the QNX operating systems. And all of those are being uh, developed to run on uh, to develop to run on our silicon. All right, so mass produced and devices before the second half or second we're officially going to do a launch in June. Um, and so we're working with uh, a number of our early uh, access partners, uh, early partners, uh, customers, to get devices out uh, starting in 2012. 
as well as introductions in 2013, 2014, and even 2015, because some of the customers, like the automotive customers, uh, have longer development cycles. So we're going to see uh, a long future, uh, a long bright future with the iDynamic 6 Series processors.